Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about herbicides, in particular, glyphosate. Now, the use of herbicides has exploded since the 1990s, and I'll explain to you why. But in a second, what you want to do is ask yourself, is glyphosate, which is an herbicide, is it toxic? Is it a toxin to our body, right? And the quick answer is yes, all right? When we look at it, glyphosate is used in a lot of GMO foods. And how this came about is they were using the development of glyphosate and it was killing off weeds and, and unwanted things. But it also kills off the crop itself. So they developed basically genetically modified seeds or certain types of food, right? They can modify it so it can be more resistant to glyphosate, right? So Monsanto created these seeds and sold millions and millions or billion dollars worth of seeds, right? And then on top of that, they sold Roundup or glyphosate. So they basically double dipped, right? They use the seed and they use Roundup and you have a genetically modified crop and uh, the farming industry exploded in that manner. So what is wrong with glyphosate? Glyphosate and folic acid. Folic acid is a synthetic B9 vitamin uh, that's often used as a uh, nutrient enhancer in a lot of processed foods. So glyphosate plus folic acid basically inhibits methylation. And methylation is very important for a lot of processes. So if you really want to learn about methylation or uh, a genetics about how methylation can occur, you can look up people like Amy Yasko, um, Dr. Stephanie uh, Seneff. Um, uh, there's a lot of people out there who are experts in uh, this methylation process. But the short story is that it inhibits methylation, right? And that methylation process is very important for a lot of functions. Immune function, neurological function, cardiovascular function, respiratory, GI, skin. Basically everything. You need methylation to work properly, especially in the liver where a lot of these processes can occur, right? There's things like methylation, sulfation, glucuronidation, acetylation. There's a lot of different detox uh, pathways that will work. So if you inhibit methylation, these processes do not work properly, right? And Dr. Stephanie Seneff, uh, she's an MIT researcher. She realized that glyphosate plus low nutrient foods, right, and toxic metals combined, which is very prevalent in our diet and in, in the environment that we live in, will impact cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, GI dysfunction, Parkinsonism, so Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's and autism. So when you look at this list, right, it's an endocrine problem, cardiovascular, right, vascular problem, obesity because of toxicity, GI function, brain, brain, brain. So it impacts the brain. It impacts everything. You have to understand that. So they basically concluded that this glyphosate is impacting the entire system. And the problem with glyphosate is this. When you take glyphosate as just a pure glyphosate, it's probably not as toxic. But they use um, other products in there combined so it binds to the plant better, right? It makes it a little bit more sticky, right? So it can kill off uh, any of the uh, growth uh, that can be occurring. So if you look at it, it's not just glyphosate, it's glyphosate plus. And also what it does is glyphosate plus, let's say, a genetically modified food or a hybridized wheat. When you attach a glyphosate to it, you have essentially changed the protein makeup. So if you have just, let's say, wheat or gluten, and if it's a native grain, it's no pesticides, herbicides, you might not have a reaction. However, if you have glyphosate attached to a hybridized wheat, which is modified, and then you're adding a glyphosate to it, now you've also changed the makeup of the protein. 
And that's why the explosion of gluten sensitivity is here because of the attachment of glyphosate to wheat protein. So glyphosate will bioaccumulate in the tissue, and that is the problem, right? It, it accumulates, it doesn't uh, detoxify out of our system very well. So it's used in GMO pro crops, right? Used in wheat, oats, barley, sugar cane, sugar beets, uh, potatoes, as a ripening agent to help it ripen faster, right? So it's basically everywhere. So if you took a, let's say, a urine sample from uh, a general population and you check to see how much glyphosate is in there, it's way higher than you think. Oftentimes in the United States, the regulatory boards have uh, kind of uh, uh, healed to the big pharma. So what happens is the regulation for the levels of glyphosate is higher than, let's say, in Europe where the regulation for glyphosate is lower. So in the United States, there's more use of glyphosate. It's just the way it is, right? Um, you know, without talking about politics too much, it's just the way it is. So when we look at it, genetically modified fruits, right? Like papaya or genetically modified uh, soybeans, right? Um, there's a lot of things that are starting to creep into that GMO field. And then if it's not, gmo then it'll be hybridized, right? It'll be, you know, uh, developed to uh, change the crop a little bit. So all these types of things, it's everywhere. You eat this stuff all the time, right? Sugar cane, everything, right? Corn, it's all gmo a lot of them. So you have to be very careful. And the biggest problem is, is it bioaccumulates and you become more and more toxic. And then you take uh, the accumulation of, let's say, heavy metals, right, in our system. And then you look at the poor nutrient content here in the United States. Then you have a, a recipe for disaster and all the health effects that people will say, oh, you have a genetically modified this or that, and it's causing problems for that. If you look at it, autoimmune disease has exploded, cardiovascular disease has exploded, obesity has exploded. Right? Now, do I blame all of that on glyphosate? No, but it's a part of the problem. Right? Heavy metals are a part of the problem. High uh, electromagnetic frequencies are part of the problem. Food quality is part of the problem. So when you look at it and you start adding all these things in, how much can the body take really? Right? How much can the body take that burden and feel healthy? Right? You can see the health starting to decline here in the United States. Obesity is 60%, right? 40 to 60%, right? Depending on what literature you read. Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, right? It's going through the roof. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. So you have to understand that we have to reduce our toxic load. You know, eating fresh fruits and veggies, organically grown whenever possible. Local farms are, tend to be better. Uh, they use less things in their, in their local farms. So go to farmer's market, et cetera, and start really looking at how you're eating, what your lifestyle is, and how can you impact the toxic load, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.